Yo, what's up, legends? Welcome back to the channel where logic actually lives, and common sense takes no prisoners. If you're ready for some laughs, facts, and maybe a little roasting along the way, you're in the right place. Smash that like button, subscribe, and let's dive into the chaos. Hey guys, so we just finished work. It's 5 a.m. We're super tired. We're gonna do a money count. We did work Mardi Gras, so this is pretty exciting. Got the whole rainbow thing going. It was really <laughs> hectic tonight. I'm so tired. Okay, let's start counting. Four, five, three hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred, eight hundred, nine hundred, ten thousand, twelve thousand, three hundred. <laughs> 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. 470 in cash, and I did get transferred, I think, 1100. So I actually made 1570 tonight. That's so good. That's good. I had a good hours. person come in and tip me. 70, 80, 90, 100, 100. But you're going to run out of time. 80, 180 was. 380 and then like I don't even know oh my god I'm... how much is that oh <gasps> okay we're gonna cut this super fast <laughs> so I made two 90 and fives yeah so altogether I made 1070 so and she literally hours. worked for like half the time that I did so you just never know how it's gonna go but that's Mardi Gras <laughs> for us <laughs> bye oh wow counting tips at 5 a.m. from Mardi Gras must be rough Took you longer to add that up than it did to earn it. Ever thought of using a calculator? Nah. Let's not overwork that poor brain. Stripper math is wild. Dollar one, five seventy in six hours? Almost like you're getting tipped for doing absolutely nothing useful. Guess that's what happens when all you bring to the table is a pole and a rainbow. Keep those numbers up. Just like the guy tipping you. Next time. Count faster. We ain't got all day. Okay, I'm kind of embarrassed to make this video, but I've always said one thing about me is I will always be honest. And um, here's the thing. Men are embarrassing and liking them is just even more embarrassing. I've always always said my only flaw is that I like men. And I am unpleased to announce that I have indeed caught feelings, okay? Like, I think I'm off the streets, y'all. I think I have been moved from the streets safely to the sidewalk, like, even to the point where... Like, I'm on the inner corner of the sidewalk, okay? There's a tall, handsome man standing between Cassidy and the sidewalk, so, or the street. So, yeah, I mean, I'm in deep. I'm not even selling feet pics anymore. Like, I'm in deep. I'm in the trenches. But the trenches are kind of fun. Like, I kind of like it here. It's kind of comfy. It's kind of cute. So, that is just a little update I have for you guys. So sorry. Many apologies, but love you so much. And we'll see how this goes. Wow. Caught feelings? What? Did you trip over a tall guy and land in emotional quicksand? You've moved from the streets to the sidewalk? Congrats. You're just one bad text away from getting run over again. Giving up selling feet pics though? Bold move. Guess the man must be rich or you just really like socks now. But hey, if the sidewalk's comfy, enjoy it. Just don't slip back into the streets when you're tall. Handsome man hits you with that we need to talk message. Stay safe. You might be surprised to know my husband is actually really supportive of what I do. Hey, husband. Husband, come here. Hey. Oh, f I forgot he left me. Oh, wow. Husband's really supportive of what you do. Then poof, he's gone. Guess he left faster than you can say OnlyFans renewal. Dressed like that. No wonder he's out the door. Maybe he's just giving you space to focus on your career. But hey, don't sweat it. Plenty of fish in the sea. Just gotta swim through all the guys who also forgot to stick around. Good luck reeling the next one in. Firstly, darling, I would have no interest in dating somebody who judges someone from past mistakes, past things that they've chosen to do, and still holds on to that. So if anything, it will honestly be ruling out a lot of the junk that's available on the market. Secondly, I don't know how broke you think I am, but I am more than capable of buying a new bed if that's the greatest concern that they have. And I say this politely while on the way to an overnight booking. <laughs> oh, you don't want a guy judging your past mistakes? Guess the only judgment you're getting is on your mattress durability at those overnight bookings. You think ruling out the junk on the market leaves you with the best? Sis, with that attitude, you're more likely to get free shipping on disappointment. But hey, if buying a new bed is your flex, 
Congrats on aiming high. Just don't be surprised if it's not the bed that's the problem. Enjoy that booking, though. So if you didn't know, New York has these exclusive parties that you can go to and it's actually like pretty hard to get into. It's like a two-step application process and they actually have to interview you and everything before you can actually go. So my friend did the application process and I was her plus one. So I just kind of wanted to give you guys like a first-hand experience of what it's like to actually attend one. Bear in mind, this party only happens once a month and they change the location every single month. And the one that I went to was located actually in a penthouse in Soho. So when you first arrive, um, there's gonna be a guy at the front asking for your name, asking for your ID. And then when you get to the penthouse, before you even step into the penthouse, they're gonna take your phone and then give you like a number that's correlated to your phone. And they'll give you like a little like a notepad with a pen. So like if you wanted to like exchange phone numbers with someone you met there, you can do that. So on the main floor, there was a complete open bar stocked with a bartender and everything. And then they also had exotic dancers and stars conducting acts to kind of get everybody into the mood but throughout the night what you were supposed to do was just you know up until midnight you were supposed to mingle get to know people whatever um i guess like figure out if you want to hook up with someone or not um and then as midnight kind of hit everyone would like change into lingerie and then they would head downstairs into the bedrooms and then everyone would have like a massive party. And this party would go on till about 4 a.m. You can kind of leave whenever you want. Also, if you attend, you are not pressured to do anything at all. Like if you go and you don't hook up with anyone, that's completely fine. I did that. I left at like 1 a.m. So you're bragging about sneaking into some secret Soho exclusive party? Two-step application? Wow. Sounds like Tinder, but with more steps. You're handed a notepad to write numbers down like it's 1995. So classy. And let's not forget the mingle until midnight. Change into lingerie bit, exotic dancers, open bar, and bedroom parties? This sounds less like an exclusive event and more like a Vegas bachelorette party trying too hard. But hey, leaving by 1A, M, clearly, you weren't the main event of the night. I am actually so excited because so ages ago I messaged them when I was in Australia and they never replied to me and I was so sad because I've always wanted to be on there. Um, but yeah, like literally two days ago, I got a message from them being like, hey, we really wanna work with you. Um, are you in LA? And because I'm in LA at the moment, well, let's hope it just works perfectly. Um, they must have seen me somewhere. <laughs> oh. So they finally messaged you after ghosting you in Australia? Guess they were busy finding someone better. Oops. I mean, their loss, right? Now that you're in LA, they've seen you somewhere? Yeah, probably on the desperate emails list. But hey, congrats. Hopefully, this works out better than that first time when they didn't even bother replying. Fingers crossed you don't get ghosted again. One of the guys that I used to see, he called me being like, I saw your TikTok. And apparently I was talking about him. If the shoe fit. I definitely wasn't talking about him, but he asked me not to talk about him anymore, even though I wasn't talking about him. Anyways, I have another guy coming over tonight. One of my regulars. I gave up on building my shelf, so I'm gonna ask him to do it. I like started. No, that's all I didn't start at all. Still in the box. But yeah, I'm gonna ask him to do it because CBF. But yeah, how funny about that other guy? Like the audacity to think that this is about you, bro. But it wasn't about him at all. I just found it really funny. Yeah, I know, right? Again, man and their audacity. I wonder what gave him the idea that you were talking about him. I'm filming my first BBC scene today. <sighs> I kicked the guy out that came over last night. Scroll through a man's TikTok. That's how you get an accurate representation of who they really are. But yeah, so... My first BBC scene today. I'm like really excited. I'm so excited. Wow. So a guy you used to see thought your post was about him? The audacity, men thinking everything revolves around them. Classic. But don't worry. You've got another regular coming over to handle your stuff for you because why bother, right? Oh, and a BBC scene today? Sounds like you're really broadening your horizons or something else. Either way, it's wild how these dudes think they're the main character when clearly it's your show. 
Okay, so I'm going to tell you about one of the more fun jobs that I did as an escort. Now, this was right at the very beginning uh, when I worked for the agency. And one of the jobs that we used to get a lot of was uh, party jobs. It's fairly self-explanatory. Like a group of young lads um, would like ring up the agency and they would have a few girls come and join them for a bit of a party. Anyway, so this particular party job, um, the guy had picked out a few girls, myself included. I was given the job of ringing uh, one of the guys to sort of make all the finer details and sort of tell them what time we were getting there. Um, so I make the call, we make all the arrangements. And right at the very end, this guy says, um, you know, I've got a quick question for you. So I said, sure, go ahead. And, um, and he said, do you like the game Guitar Hero? Now, anybody that knows me, knows I absolutely love Guitar Hero. So I switched from being this very prim and proper, almost salesy kind of voice into suddenly being me and I went, mate, you're gonna get your arse kicked at this. Anyway, so we all rock up and sure enough, all the lads are like having a great time playing Guitar Hero, having a few drinks. I think there was a bit of that going on as well. Um, they were all having a great time. We walk in and one of the guys suggests, why don't we play Guitar Hero? That was a bad, bad move. Anyway, so I absolutely kicked everybody's arm. By the end of the night, we were all absolutely smashed. Uh, and there was me, fully clothed, surrounded by a whole bunch of naked people. Now, I am nothing if not a good sport. So obviously, I was happy to get naked at the end of it. Because I'm a good sport, you know. And also, because I'm a good sport, I may or may not have ended up having a bit of alone time with I was going to say one, but that would be a lie, so we'll just say more than one and leave it at that. Yeah, so maybe I had a bit of alone time with more than one person up in one of the upstairs rooms. So I essentially got paid 500 quid to play Guitar Hero and then got to fulfil one of my own personal fantasies. So that is, that has got to be one of the best jobs that I ever did. So, you got paid 500 quid to play Guitar Hero and hook up with a few guys? Sounds like you took party job to a whole new level. You're out here shredding on Guitar Hero while everyone else is naked. Talk about multitasking. Honestly, who knew being a good sport meant so much more than playing video games? Guess those lads got more than they bargained for. And you got to tick off a personal fantasy. Next time, maybe add Professional Gamer to your CV. Are you the manager here? Yeah. May I please have your name? No. Can you spell it for me? N-O. Okay. Wow, looks like you just met the most unbothered manager in history. If customer service had a mood, it's this guy. You're out here asking for basic help, and he's giving you letters instead of answers. Classic. Maybe next time, try asking for their name again and see if they hand you a scrabble board instead. It physically hurts me how small some people's brains are. Oh wow, look who's got their PhD in stating the obvious. Yeah. Some people out here really think they're rocket scientists just cause they can string together a sentence longer than a Netflix password. And the best part? Out of all the things he could have roasted, he picks your voice. Classic. Gotta love the confidence of a guy who probably thinks Climax is just the end of a movie. Maybe he should focus more on boosting his IQ instead of just boosting his Wi-Fi signal. Keep doing you. Habibi, come to Dubai. Oh, you went there? Good for you. Champ. Hope you have the time of your life. But hey, before you leave, do us all a favor, grab some mouthwash. I'm sure your breath smells like all those brilliant ideas you never had. Safe travels. Anyway, that's it for this one. Folks, hit that like button if you enjoyed the roast. And don't forget to subscribe for more. Here's a question for you. What's the dumbest comment you've seen online? Drop it below. I need a good laugh.